Okay, so we're diving into Victor Jordan's resume today. And I gotta say, this isn't just some dry list of jobs. This thing is like a treasure map of experience. I see what you mean. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Right from the start, it's clear this is someone who's really crafted their career path. Exactly. Just looking at his early career, the variety really jumps out at me. Mining, oil and gas, we've got wood processing, even pharmaceuticals. That's a lot of different industries to have experience in. It really is. And that kind of breadth can be so valuable. Each of those industries brings its own challenges, you know, different paces of work, different company cultures even. It tells me Victor's adaptable, that he can jump in and figure things out. Which is huge, especially since we're talking about roles that need someone who can hit the ground running. But you're right, there's definitely a common thread here. We're talking industrial settings and a clear focus on technical skills. Absolutely. So let's dig into those a bit. We see maintenance, project development, even some software development sprinkled in. Some of it's expected in these industries, sure. Yeah. But then you've got things like RCM, CVM, TPM. And these aren't just buzzwords, they're whole methodologies. Okay, for those of us who aren't as up on our acronyms, maybe a quick explanation of what those are and why they stand out to you. Sure thing. So RCM, that's Reliability Centered Maintenance. CBM is condition-based maintenance, and then you've got TPM, total productive maintenance. Mm -hmm. What they all point to is a proactive approach. It's not just fixing things when they break, it's about using data, using strategy to prevent downtime before it even happens. So not just fixing things, but making sure they don't break in the first place. That kind of proactive thinking is valuable anywhere, but especially in these industries. Exactly, and the fact that Victor lists these specifically tells me he's not just handy with a wrench, he's thinking ahead, anticipating problems. Okay, so we've got the strategic maintenance angle, but then there's the software side too, which seems like a whole other area of expertise. Right, and it's not just one type of software either. You've got operational technology like SCADA, those are big in industrial automation, and PLCs, programmable logic controllers, again, very industry specific. But then he also lists SAP, which is completely different. That's enterprise resource planning, managing entire business processes. So he's comfortable with the systems that run the factory floor, but also the systems that keep the whole business running. It's like he's fluent in two languages, the language of machines and the language of business. And that's gotta be so valuable, being able to bridge that gap. Someone who understands not just how to make things work, but how it all connects to the bottom line. Exactly, and that's something we see come through even more when we look at his career trajectory. So we've established Victor has this really impressive range of skills, but I'm curious to see how he's actually applied them, you know, in real world situations. Yeah, this is where looking at his career trajectory gets really interesting. Mm -hmm. You see how he's moved through different roles and companies. There's a real sense of like, growth and intentionality there. Right. Early on, there's a lot of shorter stints, one to three years at a company, Yeah, which makes sense, right? He's exploring different industries, gaining experience. Exactly. It's like he's trying things on for size, seeing what fits. And then as his career progresses, we see those shorter stints become longer tenures. Like he's found his groove, the areas where he can really make an impact. And it's not just about staying put longer. It's the types of roles he takes on too. Look at his time at Table McDuratex. He goes from maintenance engineer to head of maintenance in just a few years. That's a pretty quick climb, showing real leadership potential there. Exactly. And then at Pacific Rubialis, supervisor of automation, these aren't just lateral moves, it's real progression. So it's one thing to have the skills, it's another to lead a team, drive results, and these roles suggest he can handle that. Absolutely. And remember how we were talking about wanting to see tangible impacts? Oh yeah, getting those specifics. Well, Victor delivers on that. He doesn't just say, I was responsible for maintenance. Yeah. At Pacific Rubialis, he says he spearheaded initiatives that saved the company $2 million. $2 million, that's, that's not nothing. That's a serious contribution. Exactly. So that makes you think, what kind of work goes into achieving that? Right, what was he actually doing there? Well, that's where I think that deep understanding of those maintenance methodologies comes in. Remember, RCM, CBM, TPM, those aren't just about fixing things. It's about optimizing processes, identifying potential problems, extending the lifespan of equipment. So he's likely used that expertise to reduce downtime, minimize waste, streamline things. Exactly. All of which contribute to those big cost savings. And in a company that's growing fast, that needs to be smart about resources. That's incredibly valuable. Absolutely. And it's not just about saving money either. It's about understanding how it all fits together. The technical side, the business goals, 
the impact on the bottom line. And we see that come through again when he talks about his work at Technoquimica's. He mentions implementing something called VDI, Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. And full disclosure, I had to look that one up. Yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful. But the key thing here is how he phrases its impact. Significantly optimize performance for critical applications. Again, he's linking his technical expertise to those real business outcomes. Exactly. So for those of us who aren't living in the IT world every day, what did that actually mean? What did he do? So imagine a company where everyone's relying on the same computers for these essential programs. Which can slow things down, cause bottlenecks. Right, so VDI essentially creates virtual desktops on a central server. So each user gets the computing power they need without overloading the system. It's like giving everyone their own lane on the highway instead of being stuck in traffic. Exactly, and that not only improves performance, but it can make data easier to manage and secure. So by implementing VDI, Victor likely streamlined things, boosted productivity, maybe even saved some serious headaches for the IT department. Which, let's be real, everyone appreciates. Absolutely, and it's not just about the IT folks being happy, right? It's about understanding how all these pieces fit together. The tech, the business goals, the bottom line, Victor gets that. Yeah, and it's not just about saving money either. It's about making things run smoother, being more efficient. Okay, so to wrap things up here, for someone listening who wants to really understand Victor's expertise, what are the key takeaways, the things that really stand out? Well, I think we're looking at someone with a proven track record of success and in a variety of industrial settings, which is important. Right. He's not just a one-trick pony. Exactly. He's comfortable with a range of technical skills, from hands-on maintenance to these really complex software implementations. And not just comfortable, but he understands how to use those skills to get results. Absolutely. Whether it's saving millions of dollars or optimizing those critical systems, he understands the bigger picture, how it all connects. And let's not forget that adaptability, that willingness to take on new challenges. Yeah, that comes through loud and clear in his career path. So we've gone through his skills, his experience, the tangible impact he's had. It's like we always say, the resume is just the beginning of the story. But it gives you a good foundation for those deeper conversations. Exactly. And on that note, we'll leave our listeners with this thought. A resume can tell you a lot, but it's in those conversations where you really figure out if someone's the right fit. Absolutely. 